at least my watch past 15 right now. And since this is a lightning talk, we have so short amount of time. So I'm super eager to get started. So please keep uh, coming in, even though I start. And uh, welcome. And thank you all so much for being here. I think I'm blessed with, uh, I think, the nicest audience throughout the whole conference. So thank you all. I appreciate that. And also say hi to the, the Code Blob people. This is their first public outing. So let's say you're doing a big demo, but um, and you want to showcase this new fancy thing that you built. You built some kind of smooth way of selling electric roller blades or something like that. However, to demonstrate this, uh, there's a lot of moving parts. You need like a browser running. You need a mobile app in a simulator running. Maybe you need two different user accounts and and like maybe some of them need bank ID and everything. So doing this live would be probably a bad idea. So instead you decide to record it, which also is nice because then you can reuse the video later. And maybe even if you could put some some documentation at the start of it, some text or something, that would be very nice. And uh, the thing is, when you were doing this recording, someone wrote to you on Slack, right? Which always happens. So you got a notification, and there was this whole burning thing that you had to fix, so you had to switch away for a while. And you were so deep into the recording that you don't really want to start it again. So you just left the recording running, you switched away, and now you're back with a video with a whole lot of dead time in it that you want to be rid of, of course. And you could solve this by opening Windows Movie Maker or whatever software is already installed on your OS. I actually learned today that Windows shipped this new thing that's called, what's it called, ClipChamp. I haven't really tried that, but I'm sure it's fine. But in my experience, in general, these non-professional video editing softwares, they, they kind of hurt you in a lot of unexpected ways. Most of them don't even have a timeline view, for example, and they kind of want you to stick smooth filters and glittery stuff onto it to make it very Instagrammable. But on the other hand, if you go for the super advanced video editing stuff, they come jam-packed with so many tools and features which make something as simple as this suddenly a huge multi-delivery project that you have to learn a lot of stuff to, to do. And also, since you're a developer anyway, there's nothing quite as satisfying as doing super complex things on the command line. Uh, and this way, you could also rerun it later. Maybe you could have a nice edit script. Maybe you can jam it together with other commands to automate things from your life. And this is kind of where today's topic comes in. With Fempeg, uh, we can do all these things. And we're going to have a look at especially these three commands. Yes, I know it's four, but they're kind of similar. Uh, Fempeg is not known for having the most intuitive user interface, as I'm sure a lot of you can already see. But as we look more into it, I hope at least some of it will make more sense. Uh, but before that, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Bendikta. I'm a full stack developer. I sing in a choir, and I, I also do some speed running now and then. Speed running is video games, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Just after New Year's, I started my own IT consulting firm with a name that works very well in Norwegian, I promise. It does not work that well in English, so I will not say it. But it has to do with like music and, and reverberance and stuff. And my focus is to kind of help organizations not only with tech, but also like the culture stuff, which I personally burn for. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, I'm a pretty heavy gamer. I'm, I'm on the speedrunning leaderboards, just saying. And while everyone uh, else during COVID was getting super into like sourdough and stuff like that, I got super into live streaming video games on Twitch, which sent me into this deep rabbit hole full of production podcasts, microphone tests, and, and video encoding forums. I came out the other side with a full home office of audio racks, microphones, lights, and, and all of these things, and a whole lot of production software on my computer. One of them being Fempeg, which I used to kind of stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time, which was pretty cool. 
Uh, so with that, let's get back to video editing. And before we do the actual work, I feel like we have to talk at least a little bit about what Fempeg actually is. The problem with Fempeg is that it's, it's such a big thing. It has so much history. But uh, uh, in short, it's a software project, uh, and which is basically a Swiss Army knife when it comes to uh, media, audio, video, and doing all kinds of things with, with that kind of files. You can use it to do everything from converting between different formats, but you can also use what Fempe called filters to actually go into each frame of a video and perform changes. For example, adding cool effects or blurring stuff out or maybe cropping a video. And uh, some of some really big products like VLC Media Player or Blender, the 3D modeling software, actually uses libraries from this project. So I'm not going to claim I'm an expert on this in any way, but uh, at least we're going to have some fun with video. Uh, before we do that, though, one more thing. Codex, a uh, heavy thing to cover in such a short amount of time. But in short, a codec is uh, something that translates to and from a video format. I like to think of it as some kind of library that gives you two functions, one which takes a raw video stream in and returns some kind of compressed format of that. And then on the other hand, you have something that takes the compressed version in and returns uh, the full thing out. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to say about that. You have the standards committees, they come out with new formats, and then you usually have other people who come up with the actual software implementation of this. And there are a whole lot of different codecs uh, for different kinds of use cases. Uh, some of them you've probably uh, heard about or maybe you've seen. MP3, for example, is a codec. And uh, when you watch Netflix, for example, maybe that's H.264 that you're seeing without thinking about it. Uh, so to summarize, codecs are the software implementations that let us kind of deal with these media formats. And now we're ready to start editing. So we're going to take a little deep dive into each of these commands. And for the occasion, I've recorded a simple demo to kind of point back to the scenario I talked about earlier. Uh, and uh, if you see at this point, this is kind of where you got the Slack notification. So you had to turn away. There's a lot of dead time in here. But it picks up, should do, right there. And uh, we want to cut that out, obviously. And we also want to preface the video with some kind of image with some text and, and to give some input into what this actually is, maybe like a date or something. So I made this image. And uh, that's what we want to put at the beginning of the video. So let's start with that. But we can't just slap an image onto a video stream. That's kind of weird. So we need to convert the image into a video somehow. And we can do this by first uh, sending the image into Fempeg as an input. We also have to prepend it with loop one to kind of tell Fempeg that if you reach the end of this, just keep looping it till I say to tell you to stop. And then we tell it to produce something that is five seconds long. And uh, then we choose our codec, uh, which is libx265. Yeah, it's, yeah, let's not get into that, HEVC. And next, we apply one of those filters. And this is more just an example. You don't have to do this. But what this does is it takes whatever input you have, and it turns the resolution up so that if you have a small video, it, it makes more pixels. So, And as you can probably figure, it will also ruin your aspect ratio. There are ways to deal with that, but we will not get into them now. And lastly, we say which file to store all this in. And if we run this command and open the file that we get, it will look like this. Five second video with an image. Pretty cool. But what about the giant gap with nothing happening in the middle of the video? Let's continue to that. Now we need to cut away a piece of that video I just recorded. And there are probably a ton of ways to do that with Fempeg. It's such a powerful tool. But one way you can do it is kind of copy out the parts of the video before the boring thing, and then copy out the parts of the video after the boring thing, and then mush all those together. It will be like it never happened. So uh, uh, we can do that by first starting with dash i, where we pipe in the whole video that I just recorded. And then we tell it dash 2, which means play this video until four seconds have passed. 
And uh, uh, next, we add the same filter and we choose our codec just as we did earlier. And lastly, we tell Fempeg where to store all this and we call it cut1.mp4. And if we run this command, it will go very quickly because it actually copies data, uh, I think. No, it actually encodes. Don't worry about it. We go and open the video. It will look like this. And it will stop just as the boring part happens. The difficult thing here is actually finding the timestamps, but you can just watch the video. For the other part, we do almost uh, everything the same way. Uh, the only thing is we want to start up after the boring part. So uh, we pipe in the video, as we did, and uh, we tell it to start dash SS at 12 seconds and then continue until it reaches the end. And if we open that video, it will start up after the boring part and then keep playing. It will show the rest of the demo. Uh, and now what we have is three independent video files, uh, one with the image and one with the thing before the boring part, and then we have a last one that's the rest. And we want to put that together. There are also many ways to do that, but one of them is to use one of those filters that we, were, uh, that we saw a bit earlier, uh, only this time it's something called a complex filter, which always tells us something good's going to happen. The difference between a filter and a complex filter is that a complex filter can have multiple inputs and outputs. And, uh, and the normal one just, since the syntax is so easy, you don't get that control. Uh, so what we do is we tell the filter what to use as inputs. And uh, this looks maybe a little jaunting, but what we basically tell it is that we want to choose the video and the audio tracks from file number 0, 1, and 2. And then we actually call the filter we want to use, which is concat. And we tell it that we have three files that we want to match together. Uh, they each have one video and audio track. And then we tell it what to store this output in. And then we kind of make up our new, new streams, uh, kind of like a variable. We call it VNA. And then after, we use something from Fempeg called map, which basically lets you choose whatever tracks from the input you want to pass on. It's a very, very heavily used part of Fempeg. And uh, after that, we just need to tell it our codec again, and we add a dash r just to tell it with how many frames per second it wants to use. Because I've encountered sometimes it kind of spirals out of control and tries to use a whole bunch of frames, and then just your computer burns up. Uh, after that, we pipe it to an output, and we run that for a little while. We get a file, we open it, and it will look like this. First the image, then the first part, and no boring part. Pretty cool. And, uh, and uh, that was, uh, I think that was what I wanted to show. This use case might not necessarily be relevant for you all, but but what I kind of wanted to show you all here is that there's nothing magic with video files. You can interact with them in the same way as you do normal text files on, on the command line. And uh, it's just data that you can manipulate. And I remember when I kind of moved from and made that transition into going from knowing it was magic to knowing it was maintainable, it kind of opened my eyes to start poking around on the interweb and maybe look a bit into how Netflix works and that kind of thing. And uh, yep, and that's kind of what uh, I wanted to achieve with this talk. So uh, uh, since we have some time left, uh, I think I want to show you some other use cases that I've used in my own life. Uh, I don't know how many of you sing in a choir, but uh, it's, uh, it's very normal that you get these audio files with like your voice in it, because normally in a choir you have several voices that are very similar, so it's nice to have one file that kind of represents you to rehearse with. And uh, the thing is that our conductor kind of gives us those in uncompressed formats. So what you end up with is a song that's like one minute with some piano in it and 40 megabytes. And since you have 20 songs in a semester, suddenly you have two gigabytes of, of songs lying on your phone. Uh, but if uh, I take something as simple as a find command, and pipe that into Fempeg, I can kind of traverse my whole directory and compress the files and put them somewhere else, which is very handy. Uh, another example is that in the team I'm currently working in, we like to have these bi-weekly quizzes, and I'm also a super big Eurovision fan, 
And uh, when I want to make a Eurovision quiz, of course, you need clips from the show. But the problem is that uh, all the clips from the show has kind of the country in the lower left corner. So it's, and that's not very good to have when you kind of want people to guess which country it is about. Uh, but then I found this command on the internet that kind of lets me blur parts of the video. So then I can just pipe all the clips through it and end up with a nice blurred out part. Nice. And the last one is also maybe a little jaunty. Uh, before I had this talk, I wanted to kind of make an ad for it. And one of the things that's my guilty pleasure in life is make video happen when people don't expect it. So what I did was grab some video of me working on this presentation, and then I piped it through the FEMPEG uh, pipeline for making it into a GIF, and then I put that in a LinkedIn post. And I remember when some people liked that, and the notification email I got in my inbox, even that notification email had the GIF in it, so it moved when I opened it on my phone, which was pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to show you today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for showing uh, for showing up. It was very nice.